Hello tech friends, tech heads, tech junkies, and those otherwise just blatantly interested in tech. Elric Ferris here on Tech of Tomorrow to introduce to you folks a brand new motherboard from the people over at Biostar. Now, Biostar is really aimed at a lot of the channel OEM market, and they do have a lot of boards that are for entry level and at a solid price, and they're good for overclocking. Today, we're going to introduce to you a brand new board for them. This is their new Hi-Fi Z77X motherboard that has a lot of nice features, has a nice layout, and really just has some really new sound on it called the Puro Hi-Fi. So without any more bullshit, let's hop in and let's take a look at this new board from Biostar. All right, folks, so first off, we can see this motherboard is a standard ATX form factor board. It'll fit in probably any mid-tower or larger case. Works with all of the new i7 processors, LGA 1155, all ready for Ivy Bridge, is also compatible with the former Sandy Bridge processors as well. Over here to the right, we have the memory, 32 gigabytes, DDR3 memory, dual channel. It says it's certified for up to DDR3 2400. When you're overclocking, that number will probably go down, but I guess they're basically saying if you have an XMP profile that you want to go ahead and engage, it'll, it'll do that. I'm going to jump back over here. We're going to come over here and talk about the power connectors. We have the 8-pin here, above and to the left of the ZIF socket. Then over here, we have the 24-pin power. Next, let's move to the ZIF socket area. All around here, you can see there's plenty of room for an aftermarket cooler, including water cooling. Here comes my cat. I guess she's curious. She's interested in Biostar motherboards, so she wants to check it out. We can see we have solid ferrite choke, high C capacitors. There's some also very, very interesting capacitors that are underneath here. It's kind of a little bit hard to see, but you can see these are all very big. This motherboard is actually very good at overclocking. A lot of people don't really realize this, but Biostar motherboards work very well in the overclocking environment. The BIOS has actually been readjusted on this motherboard, and so it should be very, very stable and great for overclocking. Now let's move down to the bottom of the board and let's take a look at our expansion as far as PCIe goes. We can see we have one, two, three of the PCIe 1X slots. Then we have one, two, three of the PCIe 16X slots. Now these will either run in 16, 16, four, or they will just run in single 16 depending on how you're running them, which means if you want to stick a card down here by itself, it'll run 16, by itself here, by itself here, or you can just run two of them in 16, which is pretty cool. Now let's talk about the fan headers on the motherboard, and this is somewhere where I kind of feel that the people over at Biostar have really failed, and I think you guys are going to agree here. There's only two fan headers, one up here above the zip socket. We can see that one clearly right here. And then we see the secondary one right here on the other ZIF socket. That's one of my complaints about the board. Now, one of the other complaints I have about the board right off the bat is the location of the USB 3.0 header. Now, you guys can see it's right here. Why is the USB 3 header located in between my video cards? Now, that's terrible design right there. I don't know what these guys were thinking on that. Um, I hate to beat my buddy Jerry up on his design, but that's just a poor design. Let me hear what you guys think. I'm not really digging on that at all. Now, I am liking, though, however, the color scheme. The color scheme of this motherboard and all the cooling that you can see right here, all very nice. Has a really cool blue anodized aluminum look. It's very beautiful. I mean, actually, the board layout of that is really nice, other than the fact of the headers and that. Those two things about the board are the negative aspects of the board. The rest of it is still really good. Now let's move over to the right side of the board and let's talk about our SATA support. This motherboard has support for both the new SATA 3 and SATA 2 support. So we have the top, we have the SATA 6 gigabit per second connectors. Then down here, we have the SATA 3 gigabit per second connectors. So we've got them both all located right here. Right here, we can see the BIOS, clear removable. You can pull it off with an EEPROM chip and pull that off. Down below that, we have the meter, which is going to give you your error codes. So there'll be a bunch of little signals on here. If you have any kind of failure on the board, a little error code will come up. You look in your manual, it'll tell you what's wrong with your motherboard. And then you can try to fix that problem. Clearly, everything is nice and laid out right here. You can easily see where all the connections come from your case and connect onto the motherboard. 
You have both your reset and power button right here. Then we have a set of USB headers. These are the USB 2.0 headers. We have a COM port header. Oh, and you know what? I was wrong. I take that back. I didn't see this earlier. I was blind. There are actually three system fans. So my apologies. I take a little bit of that heat back on that. Here's actually a third system fan right here, located at the bottom. There should be a little bit more, but three is not that bad. So I retract my former comment when I said that, was, that that was a bad thing because there were actually three of them. That was my bad, not theirs. So move around the side of the board. Now here's where things start getting really exciting. Over here, you guys can see it says Puro High Five or Puro High Five. Well, that's something very interesting. That's right here on the board. Hi-Fi cap, Hi-Fi resistor. You guys can see all of this is totally segregated away from the rest of the motherboard. Nothing is connected in here, nothing's in here, nothing at all. This helps ensure that none of the electronic noise that you get from the motherboard is being translated into the sound components whatsoever. And this is going to be something very exciting and we're going to be doing another video strictly on the sound of this motherboard. Underneath here is their chip, part of their power. Now let's talk about the last thing on the motherboard, the rear I.O. I'm going to flip it around. We have a standard legacy keyboard port. We have two, four, USB 2.0, two USB 3.0, HDMI, DVI, standard VGA, which is basically a gear because a lot of the poorer Asian countries and poorer countries still use VGA monitors, and this is meant to make that compliant. I don't like it. I would have much preferred to see a display port connection on here, especially with Ivy Bridge. So that's another slight little nick with me, but not the end of the world. Here we see the nick. 7.1 analog audio. Now I just want to make an exit comment about this because I mean I have the package here and I know that this is a pre-release board but I'm hoping there's going to be some kind of breakout thing on this that has digital audio because you can see right here everything here is completely analog. The only digital you're going to get at all is through your HDMI port which not that many people are going to use. Some people will but not a lot. But maybe they're still making some changes. This is an early release of the board. Let me just flip it back again so you guys can see it. This is the Biostar Hi-Fi Z77X. So hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is the world exclusive. Remember you saw it here first on Tech of Tomorrow, the new Biostar Hi-Fi TZ77X. See you guys back here with more reviews later. Frickin' biker.